Captain Eli Mercer leaned forward in his chair aboard the Aurora, eyes fixed on the blinking console. The deep hum of the ship's engines filled the background as the distress signal pulsed urgently through the speakers. Are we sure it's genuine? asked Lieutenant Kara, her gaze locked on the screen displaying the signal's origin. Eli rubbed his chin, thoughtful. It's coated with a Venari signature. We can't just ignore it. Kara nodded, her fingers dancing over the controls. The signal's coming from the Nebula sector. That's not exactly a friendly neighborhood. Eli stood up, pacing the small space of the command center. Prepare a course. Let's see what's out there. Could be a trap, could be a broken-down relic, or it could be the real deal. The aurora shifted slightly as the engines recalibrated their trajectory toward the signal. Eli's crew, a mixture of seasoned officers and eager young specialists, prepared for the unknown. As they approached the coordinates, the outline of a massive ship emerged from the shadows of space, its hull scarred and pitted. The design was unmistakably Venari, sleek and efficient but now lifeless against the backdrop of stars. Hail them, Kara, Eli commanded, his voice steady. Kara sent the hail, and the bridge crew waited in tense silence. A crackle over the comm broke the stillness, then a voice, strained but clear, this is the Venari Vessel Sovereign. We are in need of assistance. Our systems are failing and we lack the capability to repair them. Eli grabbed the communicator. This is Captain Eli Mercer of the human vessel Aurora. We received your distress call. Can you hold your position? We can maintain our current location, but our power reserves are dwindling. We do not have much time. The Venari replied, urgency underlining his measured words. What seems to be the problem? Eli asked, his mind already racing through potential scenarios. It is our propulsion core, the voice answered. Our engineers are unaccustomed to this type of mechanical failure. Eli glanced at his crew, a smirk playing on his lips. We might just be the help you need. Stand by for boarding. Turning to his team, Eli's expression hardened with determination. Kara, prep the shuttle. I want to see this propulsion core myself. Jansen, you're with me. Let's gear up and see if human ingenuity can get a Venari ship flying again. Yes, sir, they responded in unison. As they prepared to board the shuttle, Eli felt the weight of the opportunity before them. A successful mission could bridge the gap between human and Venari technologies, opening doors that had been closed to humanity until now. Remember everyone, stay sharp. We're about to step onto a ship that's not just alien in design, but possibly in situation. Keep your eyes open and your minds alert, Eli instructed, leading his team into the shuttle. The shuttle bay doors closed with a hiss, and the small craft detached smoothly from the Aurora making its way toward the ailing Venari ship. As they docked, Eli felt a surge of anticipation. This was the unknown they had trained for, the frontier they lived to explore. Ready for whatever comes next, he muttered to himself, stepping into the airlock as the Venari ship loomed large before them. The airlock door hissed open, and Captain Eli Mercer led his team into the dimly lit corridors of the Savrig Asterisk. The architecture was distinctly Venari, with sleek lines and a minimalist design that spoke of a civilization that valued efficiency over adornment. Power's low. Keep your lights on, Eli instructed, sweeping his flashlight across the walls. Jansen, his second-in-command, nodded, his own light piercing the gloom. No signs of life yet, Captain. Should we be concerned? Eli kept moving forward, his senses alert. Stay on mission. We're here to help, not to speculate. As they rounded a corner, they were met by a delegation of three Venari their slender forms draped in flowing robes. The leader, a tall figure with piercing eyes, stepped forward, extending a hand in greeting. I am Thesson, Captain of the Sovereign. We are grateful for your prompt response, he said, his voice echoing slightly in the quiet corridor. Eli shook his hand, feeling the firm grip of the Venari captain. Eli Mercer, we understand you have a problem with your propulsion core. We're here to see if we can assist. Thesson nodded, gesturing for them to follow. This way, please. I will explain as we walk. The group moved through the corridors, Thesson providing details. Our propulsion core is unlike anything in your human engineering. It's based on quantum field manipulation, very sensitive and, unfortunately, currently beyond our ability to repair without the proper resources. Eli listened intently, mentally cataloging each piece of information for later. How did this malfunction occur? he asked. It was sudden. Thesson replied, a hint of distress in his voice. One moment, everything was functional. The next, we lost all propulsion capability. We suspect an underlying flaw in the core's design, 
perhaps exacerbated by our recent navigation through the nebula sector. They arrived at a large chamber where the core was housed. The room was filled with a low hum, the sound of emergency power supporting life support and essential systems. The core itself was encased in a transparent alloy, its intricate components glowing faintly in the dim light. Eli approached the core, his gaze fixed on the complex network of circuits and quantum fields. I've never seen anything like this, he admitted, but I'm willing to give it a shot. Jansen, start diagnostics. Let's find out what we're dealing with. Jansen deployed a series of tools, interfacing his device with the Venari technology. The diagnostics ran, data streaming across the screen in a flurry of numbers and graphs. Looks like the quantum stabilizer is offline, Jansen reported after a few minutes. Without it, the core can't maintain the necessary field coherence. Eli rubbed his chin, considering the problem. Can it be bypassed or rebuilt? Thesson exchanged a glance with his engineers, uncertainty clear on their faces. Perhaps, with your expertise, we do not possess the capability to fabricate the necessary components. Let's get to work then, Eli said, turning to his crew. We'll need to improvise. Jansen, prep the fabricator. Let's see if we can't patch this up with a mix of Venari tech and a little human creativity. As they set to work, Eli felt a burgeoning respect between the two crews. Here, far from home on a ship unlike any other, human and Venari worked side by side, their mutual goal forging a tentative bond in the cold vastness of space. Inside the engine chamber of the Sovereign, the air was thick with tension and the sharp scent of ozone. Captain Eli Mercer knelt beside the exposed quantum core, tools scattered around him. His brow was furrowed in concentration as he studied the complex circuitry and glowing energy fields that made up the Venari propulsion system. Thesson, the Venari captain, hovered nearby, watching Eli's every move. Have you encountered anything similar in human technology? He asked, his voice tinged with curiosity and concern. Eli shook his head without looking up. Nothing exactly like this. Our quantum tech is rudimentary compared to this. But, he paused, tapping a component gently with a small tool. I've got a few ideas. Jansen, Eli's right-hand man, handed him a modified interface device. We've adapted this from our spare parts. Should let you interact with the core's systems directly. Good work, Jansen. Eli took the device, connecting it to a panel on the core. The readouts began to flicker, and a stream of alien symbols scrolled across the interface. Now let's see if we can talk to each other. As Eli worked to bridge the gap between human and Venari technology, Jora, a Venari engineer assigned to assist them, leaned in to observe. Your approach is unconventional, she remarked, her tone a mix of skepticism and intrigue. Eli grinned, not looking up from his work. Human engineering in a nutshell. Sometimes you have to think outside the conventional to make things work. After several intense minutes, Eli's device beeped sharply, a green light flashing on its surface. There we go. We've got access. Jansen, you see this? Jansen peered over Eli's shoulder at the data streaming in. Looks like you bypassed their security protocols. How did you manage that? Venari tech is advanced, but it's logical. Follow the patterns, and it tells you its secrets, Eli explained, his focus unyielding. Now, let's diagnose the real issue. The diagnostics revealed a critical failure in the core's stabilizer, confirming Jansen's earlier assessment. However, the underlying cause was a degraded quantum filament, an essential component that was beyond simple repair. Eli stood, stretching his back, and addressed Thesson. The core's quantum filament is degraded. Without it, the stabilizer can't maintain the quantum field. It's like trying to hold water in a sieve. Thesson's expression darkened. A replacement filament is not something we can easily fabricate here, especially with our fabricators down. Eli wiped his hands on a rag, thinking, We might not need to replace it. Maybe we can repair it, at least temporarily. Jansen, let's prep for a micro-weld. We'll use our nano-welding kit. It's not standard procedure, but it might just do the trick. Jansen nodded, moving off to gather the necessary equipment. Meanwhile, Eli turned to Jora. We're going to need detailed schematics of this filament. Anything you have would help. Jora nodded her earlier skepticism slowly turning into respect. I will retrieve what you need. Your methods are unconventional, but perhaps that's what we need right now. As Eli and his team prepared for the delicate operation, the collaboration between human and Venari grew stronger. Despite the vast differences in their technology and methods, a mutual respect was forming, 
driven by the shared goal to restore the Sovereign to full operation. Eli knew the task ahead was formidable, but he was determined to rise to the challenge. With human ingenuity and Venari knowledge combined, there was a fighting chance. The engine room of the Sovereign was alive with activity as Captain Eli Mercer and his team set about their unconventional repair. With the Venari quantum filament schematics displayed holographically, Eli meticulously directed the nano-welding process. Each pulse of the welder was precise, aimed at reinforcing the delicate filament structure. Jora, the Venari engineer, watched closely, her initial skepticism fading as she observed Eli's careful, methodical approach. I must admit, I did not expect such precision from a makeshift repair, she said, her voice reflecting newfound respect. Eli glanced up, a small smile playing on his lips. We humans excel in crunch time. Necessity breeds innovation, as we like to say. As the welding progressed, Jora stepped closer, her curiosity piqued. May I assist? I am unfamiliar with this technique, but I am eager to learn. Absolutely, Eli responded, handing her a secondary control unit. Follow my lead. The key is in the timing and the control of energy flow. Under Eli's guidance, Jora took over some of the welding tasks. The collaborative effort not only helped progress the repair, but also served as a bridge, melding human ingenuity with Venari precision. Meanwhile, Jansen monitored the overall stability of the quantum core. Stabilization levels are holding steady, he reported periodically, keeping a watchful eye on the core's vital signs. Once the final weld was sealed, Eli and Jora stepped back to assess their work. The repaired filament, now reinforced, glowed steadily, a sign that it might just hold. Now for the true test, Eli said, wiping his brow. He moved to the main control panel, initiating the sequence to reactivate the propulsion core. The room hummed with power as the core came to life, its energy pulsating through the ship. Thesson entered the engine room just as the core stabilized his expression a mix of hope and anxiety. Is it done then? Will it hold? We've done everything we can with what we had, Eli replied, watching the readouts closely. It should hold long enough to get your systems back up and fully assess the damage. The Venari captain nodded, relief evident in his posture. You have done more than just repair a ship, Captain Mercer. You've shown us the potential of human resourcefulness. Eli chuckled, clapping Thesson on the shoulder. Let's not celebrate just yet. We still need to see this ship safely through the nebula sector. As the engine stabilized further, the crew began to relax slightly. Eli took this moment to debrief with Jora. How are you feeling about all this? Still think human methods are too unconventional? Jora smiled, a genuine warmth in her eyes. I believe I am beginning to appreciate the art of human engineering. It is... refreshing. Eli grinned, pleased not only with the success of the repair but with the deepening bond between their crews. Glad to hear it. Maybe you'll teach me some Venari techniques in return. As the Sovereign systems slowly came back online, the crew began to prepare for their journey through the Nebula sector. With the core temporarily stabilized, Eli knew they had bought some crucial time, but the true challenges lay ahead. He was ready to face them, bolstered by the trust and camaraderie they had forged under pressure. The newfound camaraderie aboard the Sovereign was abruptly shattered when a critical alarm sounded through the ship's corridors. Eli Mercer, who had been discussing further collaboration with Yora, snapped to attention. The engine room's monitors flashed red, signaling a sudden and severe drop in the propulsion core's power output. What's happening? Eli asked, sprinting towards the control panel with Jora close on his heels. Jora quickly assessed the readouts, her expression turning grave. It looks like a deliberate power diversion. Someone has rerouted the core's energy flow. Sabotage? Eli frowned deeply, the implications hitting him fast. But why? Jorah's eyes darted around the room, a mix of confusion and anger in her gaze. There are factions among my people who might not view our collaboration kindly. They fear that accepting human help shows weakness or invites further interference. Eli clenched his fists. We need to find the saboteur and restore the core before any permanent damage is done. Can you trace the diversion? I can try, Jora said, moving to a terminal. Her fingers flew over the interface, pulling up schematics and data streams. Eli turned to his team. Jansen, with me. We're going to check the physical connections. Someone had to access a panel to reroute the power. Let's move. As Eli and Jansen inspected the engine room, Jora's voice crackled over their communicators. I've located the diversion. It's coming from a secondary maintenance shaft in Section C4, 
I'm shutting it down remotely, but you need to secure it. Copy that. We're on our way, Eli responded, leading Jansen through the winding corridors of the Sovereign. As they approached Section C4, the dim lighting and the eerie quiet added to the tension. Reaching the maintenance shaft, Eli spotted signs of recent activity. Tools were scattered, and a panel hung open. Inside, a complex web of cables had been crudely manipulated. Here's our problem, Eli muttered, securing the panel and rerouting the cables to their proper configuration. Jansen, keep an eye out. Whoever did this might come back to check their handiwork. As they worked to restore the original settings, Jorah's voice came through again, strained but relieved. Power levels stabilizing. Whatever you did, it's working. Good. Stay sharp and monitor those levels, Eli replied, finishing up in the shaft. Returning to the engine room, Eli and Jansen found Thesson waiting, a mix of disappointment and concern etched on his face. I have been informed of the sabotage, he said solemnly. I cannot express enough regret that such actions have occurred aboard my ship. Eli shook his head. Now's not the time for apologies, Captain. We need to ensure this doesn't happen again. We have a potential saboteur among your crew. What can you tell us about these factions? Thesson sighed, his gaze lowering. There are those among the Venari who are isolationists. They fear that engaging with other species, especially humans, could lead to dependency or exploitation. This act of sabotage is likely a statement, a call to maintain our independence. We need to address this, fast, Eli asserted, his mind racing with the urgency of the situation. If they're willing to risk the ship to make a point, there's no telling what they might do next. Thesson nodded in agreement. I will gather my senior officers and address this internally. Meanwhile, I trust you will continue with your efforts to repair the core. Absolutely, Eli confirmed, his resolve hardening. We'll get this ship running, but keep your communication lines open. We need to be ready for anything. As Thesson departed to handle the crisis within his crew, Eli turned to Jorah, sensing the weight of responsibility on their shoulders. Let's get back to work. We've got a ship to save, and we can't let fear or politics stand in our way. Back in the engine room, Captain Eli Mercer and his team continued their vigilant watch over the sovereign systems, still reeling from the sabotage incident. Tensions aboard the ship had escalated, with whispers of discontent echoing through the Venari crew. Jorah approached Eli, her expression grim. Captain Thesson has informed me that the dissenters have been isolated, but we cannot guarantee they won't strike again. They're quite adept at hiding their movements. Eli nodded, considering their next steps. We need a proactive plan. If we can draw them out, perhaps we can end this once and for all. Jorah tilted her head, intrigued. What do you propose? We'll set a trap, Eli explained. We pretend to implement a new repair, something critical that would seem tempting for them to sabotage. Meanwhile, we monitor all access to the system. We catch them in the act. Jorah's eyes lit up with understanding. A feigned vulnerability. Yes, that could work. I'll coordinate with our security team to set up surveillance. Eli turned to his crew, who had been listening intently. Jansen, prep the fake repair protocols. Make it look convincing. We need this to be credible enough to lure them out. Jansen nodded, immediately getting to work on the computer, coding in the false operations. As he worked, the atmosphere was tense, every crew member aware of the stakes. Hours later, the trap was set. Eli and Jorah watched the system's monitors closely observing every fluctuation in power and every crew member's movement near the critical systems. It didn't take long. Late into the ship's night cycle, a figure cloaked in the shadows of the maintenance corridors approached the engine room. The surveillance feed displayed every step as the figure bypassed the standard entry points and accessed the control panel of the rigged system. Now, Eli whispered, and Venari security converged on the location. The saboteur, caught by surprise, was quickly detained. The lights flickered on, revealing a young Venari engineer, his face a mask of defiant anger. Thesson arrived moments later, his face stern as he regarded the captured saboteur. Why? he asked simply, the disappointment evident in his voice. The young Venari glared at Thesson, then at Eli. You bring them here, into the heart of our ship, and expect us to stand by? We must protect our way of life, our independence. We are not to be meddled with. Thesson shook his head. By endangering everyone on this ship, your actions could have doomed us all. Eli stepped forward, his gaze steady. Look, I understand the fear of losing your identity, your independence. But cooperation isn't about giving that up. It's about making each other stronger. 
We're here to help, not to harm or control. The room fell silent as the young Venari considered Eli's words. Finally, Thesson spoke. He will be confined until we reach our destination. This cannot happen again. As the saboteur was led away, Jorah turned to Eli. You took a great risk today. It was calculated, Eli replied. And necessary. Sometimes you have to confront the problem head-on to find a solution. With the immediate threat neutralized, Eli knew the Sovereign was not yet out of danger, but the night's events had strengthened the alliance between the human and Venari crews. There was a shared sense of purpose now, a determination to see their journey through to a safe conclusion. After the confrontation with the saboteur, the atmosphere on the Sovereign was one of cautious relief. Captain Eli Mercer and Jora, along with their respective crews, resumed their efforts to stabilize the propulsion core. The trust built over the past tense hours had solidified their commitment to each other and to the ship's recovery. Eli inspected the readouts from the Quantum Core's diagnostics one more time. Looks like we're stable for now, but it's a temporary fix. We need something more permanent. Any ideas, Jora? Jora, deep in thought, nodded toward a section of the core. We could attempt to integrate a secondary power modulator. It would redistribute the load and reduce strain on the repaired filament. Eli considered this, tapping a schematic on his tablet. That could work. It's a bit of a patchwork solution, but it'll buy us the time we need to get to a proper facility. Let's do it. They set to work, fabricating parts from the Aurora's limited supplies and adapting Venari technology to fit the human modifications. The process was intricate, requiring precise calibration to ensure compatibility between the two technologies. As Eli and Jorah worked side by side, the crew watched a silent testament to the unity that had formed under pressure. Eli was all too aware of the eyes on them, understanding the importance of not just the technical success, but also the symbolic collaboration it represented. With the modulator in place, Eli wiped his hands and stood back. All right, let's power it up and see if it holds. Jorah initiated the startup sequence, and the core hummed to life, its glow steadier than before. The monitors showed all systems in the green. A collective sigh of relief swept through the room. It's holding steady, Jansen announced, checking the data streaming through his console. Energy distribution is even, and stress on the quantum filament is minimal. Thesson entered the engine room just in time to hear the good news. His face broke into a rare smile. Captain Mercer, your team's expertise has been invaluable. You've not only saved our ship, but also provided us with a deeper understanding of our own technology. Eli nodded, acknowledging the compliment. We're glad to help, Captain Thesson. Hopefully this is the start of more cooperative ventures between our peoples. Thesson agreed. Indeed. The Council will hear of your actions and the bravery and ingenuity of your crew. You have bridged a gap that we did not even know existed. As the Sovereign continued its journey through the Nebula Sector, the repairs held, and the crew's morale improved significantly. Eli took a moment to look out at the stars, reflecting on the journey. Jora joined him, her presence a comfortable silence. You've taught us much, Captain Mercer, not just about engineering, but about resilience and cooperation. Eli smiled at her, feeling a sense of accomplishment. And I've learned from you as well. It's been a privilege, Jora. With the Sovereign now stable and the journey resuming, Eli felt a sense of completion, not just for the mission, but for the unexpected personal connections that had formed far from home. As the ship sailed through the starlit void, it carried not just a crew of humans and Venari, but a new sense of understanding and respect between their species. As the Sovereign approached the edge of the Nebula Sector, the repairs and modifications made by Captain Eli Mercer and his team held strong, ensuring a smooth passage. The atmosphere among the crew was one of cautious optimism, tempered by the recent challenges, but uplifted by their successful resolution. In the ship's conference room, Thesson convened a final meeting with Eli and the senior members of both crews. Thanks to your efforts, we are now safely out of the Nebula Sector, Thesson began, his voice filled with genuine gratitude. The Sovereign is operational, and more importantly, we have gained invaluable insights from this collaboration. Eli nodded, appreciative of the acknowledgement. It's been a challenging journey, but I'm proud of what we've achieved together. The Aurora is ready to continue on her exploration mission, but will always be available should you need further assistance. Jora, who had been instrumental in bridging the gap between human and Venari engineering principles, added, We've documented all procedures and modifications. 
This exchange of knowledge will undoubtedly advance our own technologies and perhaps pave the way for a more formal exchange program in the future. Thesson then presented Eli with a data crystal. This contains coordinates to several uncharted systems that our scouts have found promising but beyond our current priorities. Consider it a token of our gratitude and a symbol of potential shared ventures ahead. Eli accepted the crystal, intrigued by the possibilities it represented. Thank you, Captain Thesson. We'll explore these systems. Who knows? Maybe we'll find resources or allies that can benefit us all. As the meeting concluded, preparations began for the departure of the Aurora. The crew busied themselves with final checks and supply restocks, while Eli and Jorah shared a quiet farewell outside the ship. You've opened our eyes to the strength of diversity and partnership, Captain Mercer, Jorah said, her tone sincere. We'll continue to build on the groundwork we've laid here. Eli smiled, clasping her hand briefly. And we'll keep pushing the boundaries of the known universe, hopefully crossing paths with the Venari again under better circumstances. With farewells exchanged and the Aurora's engines humming softly in readiness, Eli took one last look at the asterisk sovereign asterisk. He felt a sense of accomplishment not just for the technical feats achieved, but for the bridges built between two vastly different cultures. As the Aurora detached and began its journey towards the new coordinates, Eli stood on the bridge watching the stars streak by. The challenges of the past days had tested their limits, but as each star passed, he felt a renewed sense of purpose and curiosity about what lay ahead. Chart a course for the nearest system on this crystal, Eli instructed his navigator. Let's see what's out there. The Aurora surged forward, its crew ready for the next adventure, driven by the spirit of discovery and the new friendships forged in the depths of space. The journey ahead was uncertain, but Eli knew that whatever challenges they faced, the resilience and ingenuity of his crew would see them through. As the stars of the nebula sector faded into the distance, the aurora sped on, a beacon of human curiosity and determination, sailing into the vast, uncharted wilderness of space.